clockwise only, once again. Like it is lengthwise, crosswise only. If they're very small, we'll go ahead and collimate down slightly, but most of your patients will fit fine on the 14 by 17. You don't have to worry about collimation. As far as shielding goes, guys, again, for males, you'll just basically put your shield right below the bottom board of the light, right here. Females, if you have an ovarian shield, you put it about possibly where your central ray is, but that's optional once again. And most facilities don't have the ovarian shields, unfortunately. For your markers, I would suggest on pelvis x-ray, because most people have wide hips, very large hips, put your marker on the cassette, because you're not gonna collimate likely anyway, it's gonna be on there. If you have a little light like this, you can put it in a light, but I would recommend on most your pelvis x-ray, just put it on the cassette. You're not gonna miss it. Unless you want them laying on top of your marker, which I usually don't. I don't want anyone's butt on my marker, personally. So what are we looking at? Of course, the pelvis, the head, neck, and trochanters, and the proximal one-third or one-fourth of the femur. Evaluation criteria. We want the entire pelvis along with the proximal femora, both ilia and greater trochanters equidistant. Otherwise, we don't want them shifting their weight on their hips. Lower vertebral column centered to the middle of the radiograph. So much better centered x-ray here on the bottom, as you can see. This is almost a perfect pelvis as well as this one. Very well done. We got the entire pelvis for center. Doesn't look like the patient's really shifted their weight any. And we can make out everything we want to see. Now, this is a great example to show what I'm talking about. Look at the top image versus the bottom. So, feet are turned on both of these. But see how on this one we almost don't see the lesser trochanters at all? This one we can still see them jutting out. Some patients are still going to jut out a little bit because some people have some very large trochanters. Can't always hide them completely. We, still want, we don't want them jutting out really far as if the feet were relaxed. So we're gonna be as hidden as possible or superimposed as possible. This is another great example. Look at this image on the bottom. Can you make out the very clear artifact on that image? At least clear to my eyes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's probably what we call an unavoidable artifact. What is that? What are those little dots? Little white dots. So they're stones. So they're stones. You'll see that in a lot of older patients. So they're stones. But there still is another artifact on that image. I want y'all to see if y'all can eyeball. It's sticking out to me like a sore thumb because this drives me nuts on pelvis x rays. Look on the TV screen if it helps you. A little clearer. Is it something at the left part? Yeah, learn to get those oh, x-ray eyes out. It's the line in the spine. Which line? Which line are you talking about? Maybe. Talk. It's like a white line. That right yeah. there, that's, that's normal. That's normal. That's the joint space. Y'all can't see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at the top of the left. No, yeah. he's talking about a, uh, They are talk. wearing undies. How do you know? <laughs> the bands. You the can see the elastic bands in the underwear. Did anybody see them? Um, That's the artifact. Y'all don't see that? Turn off the lights if it helps. Veronica, can you turn off the lights, please? I got it. Y'all don't see that? No. I see it now. Is it? Look closely. Oh, that band. See that? Oh, no. That's the elastic band bands on underwear, which is why you tell your patients to remove their underwear. But is it disrupting the image? It can. It can disrupt the image, yes. That's more underwear, yes. It's all clothing artifacts. Mm. So tell your patients to remove their undergarments. That will show up. By the way, is that a male or female pelvis? Yeah. On the bottom. Male. How do you know? Outlet. 
Yes, but if you couldn't see the the genitals, what would be the indicator? Shape. Up here. Angle, the acute angle. The acute angle. Acute angle. Versus the top, what is that? No, I think that no. It's obtuse, it's more wide. Developing that eyesight for that. You know, CT can do that now. You can identify the sex and the age of uh, murder victims or deceased victims. Like if they find a decomposed corpse somewhere and they have no identification factors, you put them through what's called post mortem CT, PMCT, and they'll do measurements of the teeth, the bones, and different factors to identify if it's a male, female, the age, things like that. It's really, really fascinating. So that's a little avenue you can take in X ray uh, forensics. Really cool stuff. Anyway, um, evaluation criteria, we want a lot of things on pelvis. They're very important factors. First off, symmetric ilia. What's a symmetric ilia? What's it mean by ilia? The ilium, the ilium area of the hips. Symmetric on both sides. Like we saw on those other x-rays, how the ala looked like they were different shapes. We want them symmetric, equal size on both sides. Symmetric obturator parameter for the same exact reason. So look down here, make sure they look like two little eye holes, little eye mask. Ischial spines, you can only see if they're on the image. We can't see ischial spines on this image, but usually they'd be right, right here and right here. They don't always poke out, depends on the person. Sacrum and coccyx aligned with the pubic symphysis. In other words, you'll see how the coccyx is right on top of the pubic symphysis here. If I drew a straight line, it's all in line. It tells us if the patient has shifted their weight or if they're oblique. Y'all see that? There's the coccyx right there. All right, so for proper rotation of the proximal femora, femoral necks in their full extent without superimposition, it tells us that the feet have been turned internally. Greater trochanters in profile, lesser trochanters if seen, visible on the medial border, or completely superimposed as much as possible. So all important factors for pelvis x-ray. So we're going to go to our AP oblique modified cleaves method. This is not a lateral hip x-ray, or a lateral pelvis, by the way, because we do not turn the patient in a lateral position for a pelvis. That would actually be, it actually doesn't exist. We don't do that x-ray. So this is just going to be what we call an oblique. We're going to oblique the femurs slightly in oblique view of the femoral necks and the hip joints. This is also called a bilateral frog leg position. Why? Does it kind of look like frog legs a little bit? Did y'all do it in lab where you put the feet together? Oh, it's a frog? Yeah. Bottom of a frog leg. We will not do this x-ray. That's a great question, by the way. We will not do this x-ray if there is fracture of pathology suspected. Why? Because we can very greatly injure the patient. So if the femurs are dislocated or the femoral necks are broken, that'd be a big no-no. Not gonna manipulate those legs. So please know it by all means, guys. AP oblique, modified cleaves, and bilateral frog leg. All three mean the same thing. The AP oblique pelvis, by the way. AP oblique pelvis, modified cleaves method, bilateral frog leg position. So the patient will still be supine, that has not changed. Heart position for bilateral. So same thing guys, no rotation of the pelvis. We want to sure that as is on both sides are equal distance from the tabletop. You have to be careful once again, you know, think about a patient with hip pain, you're putting the legs in that position, you're going to want to shift that weight on the 
It should remain flat on the bottom, nice supine. We're gonna flex the hip and knees and draw the feet up as much as possible. If they can, you do wanna go ahead and touch the soles of the feet together, or those plantar surfaces together. Now we're gonna equally abduct the thighs as much as possible and place the soles of the feet together. That's gonna to be approximately 45 degrees on those legs. You don't want the legs completely flat on the table. If you are very flexible, you can just relax those legs all the way down. You actually want them elevated like you see right here, about 45 degrees. That's gonna put those femoral necks in the correct position for best evaluation purposes for that doctor. IR is gonna be one inch above the pubic symphysis. In other words, you're gonna be slightly lower than you would be for the AP pelvis. One inch above pubic symphysis, or you can stay three inches below the abdomen. Now, if that's really throwing you off, you can typically center the same way as you would for the AP pelvis, and it's gonna look fine. But for optimization purposes, you wanna be about one inch above pubic symphysis. Reason being, um, you're not gonna really get a different, or you're not gonna get a different view of the pelvis itself. The pelvis is still AP. What's been obliqued? The proximal femora. So we're not really interested in the AP pelvis anymore because you already got that. That's why you go a little bit lower. Make sense? It's called abducting the thighs. Abducting the thighs. Yeah. So, like, if you got an AP pelvis and then this X-ray, you probably just completely eliminate the reason to ever do a hip X-ray. Mm -hmm. Image redundancy is a big thing. You want to limit the images as much as possible. So that's something that you can use as critical thinking skills as a tech when you become a licensed technologist. You know, in a, in a couple of years, you get an order for AP and bilateral hips, I'm sorry, AP and bilateral pelvis, and they order an AP and bilateral hip. As a tech, you would want to call the doctor up and say, hey, I just want to let you know, you're going to achieve the same thing on just the pelvis x-ray as you would for the hip. Are you sure you want to do both? And you're saving the patient time, you're saving the dose, and you're saving the money. Mm -hmm. Alarm, that's right. All right, so part position, guys. We're centering the as is of the affected side. Oh, wait, there's a different one here. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is bilateral. We can also do it unilateral. I'm sorry. If we're doing it unilaterally, we're going to center a little bit differently. We're only going to abduct one leg in the affected side. We're going to center the as is of the affected side of the midline of the grid. Flex the affected hip and knee and draw the foot up to the opposite knee. You see right here. It will abduct that thigh approximately 45 degrees laterally. So essentially it's the exact same thing as a lateral hip x-ray. This would be a bilateral, I'm sorry, a unilateral modified cleanse method. Just doing one side. But I've never seen it done this way, I've always seen it just done bilaterally. They do that for comparison views. You want to see both sides. They do it this way for clinic. As for the pelvis or for the hip? Well hip is the hip that's supposed to be done. You don't get one side of the That will still be a 45 degree abduction of those thighs, by the way. Just one side. All right, central ray. So for the bilateral guys, um, two inch, well, why? Oh, one inch. Still one inch above the pubic symphysis. For the unilateral, it's perpendicular to the femoral neck itself or where that crease is on the leg, like yellow in the lab. For collimation, 14 by 17 bilateral. Unilateral, it's probably going to be a 10 by 12. It's got just like a hip x ray. But make note bilaterals are what you're always going to do for pelvis. So they're just going to do one side on the pelvis. That's just a hip x ray. So bilaterals are the one to stick with. Still crosswise, by the way, on 14 and 17. Wide area. This is pelvis. This is pelvis. Still pelvis x ray. Even though it's saying oblique femoral necks, it's still considered a pelvis series. I know that's a little confusing, but mm -hmm. it's still considered as part of the pelvis series. It's still pelvis. Yeah. 
So that's for the actual hip series. We're going to go with that separate. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's confusing because essentially it's just a hip x-ray from the unilateral. I don't even know why they include that if it's on the hip x-ray. You know, it's always going to be bilateral. I guess they just want to confuse everybody, but it's an option to do it unilaterally if you so choose. All right, so this is going to show an AP oblique projection. Make note, once again, it's not a lateral pelvis. We're doing an AP oblique <coughs> pelvis x-ray or AP oblique femoral x. Both we use it interchangeably. We're looking at the femoral heads, the femoral necks, and the trochanteric areas. So we look at what it looks like right there. We're sitting a little bit lower. We don't need the top of the pelvis anymore. Focus on this area right here. And in this x-ray, guys, the greater trochanter becomes superimposed, the lesser becomes in profile. So for this cleaves method, the greater trochanters will become superimposed, the lesser will be put in profile on both sides. Now what's wrong with this x-ray? They did not do correctly. Pubic symphysis. Is no, we don't worry about that because we got that on the AP pelvis. This is the areas we're focused on for this one. They did shift their weight a little bit, but what's the biggest glaring problem we have here? The hardware. The hardware. The hardware is clipped barely. This X-ray will need to be repeated because we don't have the entire hardware on that image. You see that? Just barely. It would have to be repeated. And maybe the one right in the center is that something? That's a shield. That's a shield. It's a very thin shield. The <laughs> shield? No, no, no. Oh, the, yeah. Or shift the center in slightly. So if the patient comes in, he can ask him with down, like hard, hard range. It's not on the order you can always ask if you have a suspicion. If you have any surgeries before, they'll be like, yeah, I had a hip replacement. They'll usually tell you. So for that, you just open up the call machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for that last one, or I guess the one that's on top up there, mm -hmm. um, do they put that hardware like in through the fovea capitis? Or? Like when they're doing the surgery? Mm -hmm. So they actually go in through the shaft and up towards the hip joint, typically for that one. You couldn't go through the fovea capitis unless you dislocated the femur from the hip. I just figured they popped it out and popped it back in. That would actually cause more damage. Because <laughs> there's a the nerve the shaft right. up towards the hip joint. Very messy surgery. Because yeah, there's nerve Your surgeries are very messy. All right, evaluation criteria, guys. This will be our last one of the day, we'll call it. Um, no rotation of the pelvis, symmetric sides, acetabulum, femoral head, and femoral neck are the stars of our show on this Cleaves method. Lesser trochanter on the medial side. Femoral neck without superposition by the greater trochanter. Femoral axes extended from the hip. Bones at equal angles, of course, proper techniques. So, once again, guys, because we're doing laterals of the femurs essentially, we're wanting to superimpose those greater trochanters and we're going to put the lesser trochanters in profile. Hope that I get a good visualization of that femoral head, neck, and trochanteric areas. So, this is what they did here. Jay, to answer your question, they entered from down here and drove this up through the shaft into the hip joint. Mm -hmm. That's where that hammer again. Oh, that's not the right spot. Pull it back out. All right, let's try again. Clunk, 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 clunk. Oh, that's the wrong spot. Pull it back out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, fentanyl. He'll forget all about they, it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. They, these are very difficult. Um, that's why they need is for C arms to make sure it's in the right spot. But it's really tough to get those hardwares and those bones correctly. We do the acid. I always see it. Acetabulum? Yeah, we did that. We did one yesterday, but I didn't. I didn't see the the one where they was on uh, supine. I seen the one on prone, and they had to go through there, and it was. I was just like, hmm. "All right, folks, we'll stop there today. It's about mm -hmm. nine fifty. We'll have to stop there, and we will wrap up the rest of this chapter on Monday, and we'll review your anatomy sheets, and we'll do a little review for our test as well. It's upcoming. Test on Wednesday. It's after the Thanksgiving. Wait, for, for for Monday or Wednesday. Well, it's Wednesday, we're off. Yeah. No, it's not the following week. It's for Wednesday? Yeah. Do it on Monday. I said. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. fine. Either way, we'll finish up on <laughs> Monday, the following Monday, and prepare for the text on Wednesday. I'm going to get all the mixed up with the seniors. Yeah. I think it's good 
this is a this is part of the pelvis series. So usually the pelvis is ordered by itself in the feet, but they may order a two feet pelvis and add this one on there. The modified so pelvic cream. So what is it considered? It's considered even though it's focused so this is where it gets a little confusing. Okay. Even though it's focused on the normal area, it's part of the pelvis series. Yeah. Thank you all. I'll see you. Have a good weekend. Did you get the email, sir?